Good morning and a warm welcome to our stream service from Brighton's Parish Church. We hope that this is a time and place where you can share in worship and find support and encouragement. Prior to the start of our service, you'll have seen the notices for today and these are also available to download from our website and will be repeated at the end. In particular, please look out for the notices about the Tuesday evening praise this week and the upcoming Alpha Course in September. As we begin our time of worship now, let us take a moment to pause, to remember that God invites us to seek him and know him in this time. And if you wish, please join me in lighting a candle to help us slow down and centre our minds and our hearts on God. The Lord said through the prophet Jeremiah, Call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart and I will be found by you, declares the Lord. We gather to seek God in this time, separated though we are, because he is with us, he is near and he showed through Jesus how far he was willing to go to bring us back into relationship with himself. So let us worship God as we sing our first two hymns, Who, O Lord, could save themselves, and I will enter his gates.
Father God, we have come to worship. We may be here often, or this experience may be strange and unusual, but you are here, and we need your Holy Spirit to make this time special. We may be with our families or friends, or we may be on our own, but we gather physically and virtually with angels and archangels, with people of every colour and every nation. We gather as those who went before us gathered to worship, to reflect, to receive. We gather in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, our desire is to worship you, to declare your greatness and your goodness to feel the wonder of your presence, to listen to what you have to say, to answer your call on our lives, to resolve to live as your people with the help of your spirit. God, we are here not because we are good and not because our lives are glorious. We are here because we are sinners who mess up, human beings, who let you down, who let others down, and let ourselves down. We know what you must think of us, and so we seek your mercy. We're here also because we have heard there is good news. There is one who is on our side, whom we call Jesus. There is one who has lived life as it ought to be lived. We call him your son. We call him Messiah. We call him wonderful. We call him God. For his life, for his death on the cross, for his rising from the dead, for his return to heaven and for his gift of the Holy Spirit, we praise you. We rejoice in being saved from our failure and folly. We marvel in our new life as your adopted children. May we, who have received abundantly and freely, learn to follow where you lead, learn to give abundantly and freely. In the name of the one who loved us and gave himself for us, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours are the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The reading today is taken from Matthew, chapter 9, starting at verse 35 through to chapter 10, verse 1, and then verses 5 to 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, 
proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal those who are ill. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have been received. Freely give. Amen. May God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. Hi everyone, welcome to Community Corner where we share some of the news, ideas and stories from within and across our church family. Today we celebrate a number of folks who had a special day this past week. Hope Burton, Irene Grant, Kath Irvin, Dorothy Easton, Norma Thompson and Anne Little. And today Caleb celebrates his fifth birthday on the same day as his mum, Leanne, celebrates her birthday as well. From all of us here at Brighton's Parish Church, we send you birthday greetings. And as a church family, we celebrate you today. If anyone else celebrated something this past week, then please leave a comment in the live chat. In Caring for All, we have some more of your pictures from over the summer and the last week, including a picture from the quiz on Tuesday night, which was so much fun. So let's see that video just now. It really is encouraging to see folks from our congregation, especially when we are still so limited in how we can gather. 
We'll continue with the picture video for another week or two, so please send us your pictures by Thursday this week. Lastly, in Christ with us, the community outreach team want us to be aware of how to support others who find themselves in financial hardship, especially those struggling with debt. If this is an issue for you, then please let us know. And if you want help with debt in particular, then a great organisation to contact is Christians Against Poverty, or CAP for short. We're going to watch a short video now about someone benefiting from their ministry. My life changed, drastically changed, one morning in 30 seconds. My husband got up and said, after 20 years, I'm off, I'm evening with my girlfriend, see you later. His stuff was already in the car and within 10 minutes he was out the door. Gone. My life, my world blew apart. I couldn't cope, I couldn't get up, I couldn't eat, I couldn't go out, I didn't trust anybody, I didn't want to see anybody, I didn't want to leave the house. And I just deteriorated and deteriorated. I was very ill and in the end I had a huge nervous breakdown and then ended up in a psychiatric unit. It took me a long time to even get functional and then finances came into it. I hadn't paid my rent, I hadn't paid the council tax, I hadn't paid my car insurance, I hadn't paid anything, anything at all, nothing. Bailiffs knocked on my door. It, it was very scary, it was really, really scary. I couldn't even like look after myself, let alone deal with everything that was on my doorstep. And then I was given the number for CAP. When John from CAP first arrived, he came to my front door, which was a big no-no, because -no, all the mail was at the front door, and that we couldn't actually open the door, because it was so piled up with junk mail, bills, letters, bailiffs, everything that they had to go around. Find the back and in the other way. They picked everything off up by that porch, put it in the thing, and they walked out the door with it. They just, just left with it and just like, we'll sort it all out for you and then we'll get back to you. And they just took it and any mail that comes, just keep for me, just put it on the side, keep it, we'll come and get it and we'll sort it all out. So it wasn't my responsibility anymore. It just felt like it had gone, gone. It's all gone. They took it all away and then they were going to come back with the solution. Taking that step and doing that then freed me up to take another step and sort out mental health and other issues that were going on in my life. Even though I knew that it was going to take a while, but I felt sorted at that point because I didn't feel I was on my own. John had given me an invitation to the church. I went because I was lonely. It was Christmas. It was important for me to fit, be somewhere and be comfortable. And I felt comfortable, so it's the case. And the following week I went back and did the same. Listening, taking it all in. And I just felt like that my eyes had finally opened. And I know from this point on in my life, where I was before, I'll never ever be again. I'd stayed in contact with Cap all the way through what was going on and how everything was explained. So I knew the time was coming knew that it was on its way and it was just like okay getting excited now it's gonna it's gonna happen really soon and one day the phone rang he's like just ring in to let you know you're debt free and i'm like oh really and he's like yeah both like on the phone going yay <laughs> where my face has got to and my belief and me as a person has got to is like amazing absolutely 100 percent amazing and i wouldn't want to be anybody else or be anywhere else. I just want to be me and I'm happy with me. And I don't think I ever have been previous. What I love about CAP is that they share the love of God in practical financial ways, but also through care and spiritual encouragement. Information on CAP can be found in the description of our YouTube video today. If 
And if anyone else has something to share about anything in Community Corner, then please do so in the live chat on our Facebook page or drop us an email or phone call. We turn now to pray for others and are led in this today by our brother David McCaskill. Heavenly Father, it sure is an adventure following Jesus and these are difficult times. 2020 has so far been a, a scenic but very bumpy road. Just in the last fortnight alone, we have had a thunderstorm wreak havoc in our local community, the Aberdeenshire train derailment, the mass explosion in Beirut, and of course, coronavirus continues to dominate in its fifth month. Our high street is shrinking, companies from multiple industries struggling or collapsing around us, causing job losses. We pray for those who are poorly at the moment and or receiving treatment, whether they be in hospital or at home. We pray too for their loved ones, those providing compassion and support who are often overlooked, but they suffer too. So many people even just missing their routines at the moment, the things they're used to doing, people they see, places they meet. We ask that you would draw close to all. Within our congregation, all our connections and all tuned into this service today, we pray for those who are grieving or suffering trauma, reeling from loss or shock, whether it be from recent times or decades ago. We never fully recover, Father, and pray that you would provide strength as they adjust to a new normal. May they find fellowship and comfort and a deeper relationship with Jesus through their suffering. But we know you're there. We know you're not oblivious to our needs and we know that you have a plan for each of us who believe and know and embrace the fact that Jesus died for our sin to give us a second opportunity. And we will continue to follow Jesus within whom we have hope, sure and certain hope and trust. We will continue to open our hearts and sing his praise. We know that closed mouths don't get fed. We thank you for the great courage shown by teachers, parents, families and of course the brave pupils in now fully returning to school. Continue to be with them as they adjust to their new normal. We thank you for our church elders, deacons, volunteers and especially those who contribute to making the Sunday services and all the midweek ha activities happen. We thank them for their time and for their energy. They have proven themselves during lockdown to be the absolute backbone of our church. We will follow Jesus also through hospitality, welcoming and embracing our brothers and sisters into our own homes. We realise that turning up for church and reading the Bible are, are not just things we need to get done. And we ask that you would help us absorb every word of Scott's message this morning until we can regroup together again. Father, we listen out for your voice this morning and we thank you for Scott. Help us to focus today on what is eternal. You are eternal and you are faithful. We too will go through all the towns and villages until that glorious, final, victorious point when we will enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. Make us truly thankful. Make us a channel of your peace. Give us oil in our lamp. Our words, Father, are few but heartfelt, and said in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. darkness 
Let us take a moment to pray before we think about God's Word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In the last few months, even in the last few weeks, there has been a lot of transition, often difficult transitions. We saw last Sunday our young people moving up the school years and our primary sevens going into S1 may not have had the usual transition they were expecting. I wonder if they felt in at the deep end rather quickly. Or what about our school leavers, those going on to work, college, apprenticeship or university? Do they feel ready for the transition they are now experiencing as they go out into the workplace or onto their new campus? Transitions have also been felt by those of us who are beyond these stages. As we came out of a tight lockdown, the transition to a measure of freedom was unsettling, especially if we were maybe shielding. So this summer, we've all felt the impact of transitions. And often these can be difficult experiences which we don't really feel ready for. I suspect that the disciples were feeling a bit like that in our passage today. Up until this point, it has been Jesus alone who has shared the good news that the kingdom of God is breaking into this world. He has healed the sick raised the dead, set people free and made known the love, power and ways of God in word and deed. But now a transition comes. As Jesus sees the crowds, his heart wells up with compassion for them, with such deep concern that he is moved to action. Jesus looks out over that multitude who need help who need good news and he discerns that the time is ripe to begin the next stage of his ministry and it is going to involve the disciples. He says to them, The harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into his harvest field. The next stage of the ministry of Jesus is to have others involved in sharing the work. One man can only be in one place at one time, and so the plan of Jesus is to involve others. He instructs the disciples to pray about this. But lo and behold, what happens? We read, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. I wonder how the disciples felt at that point. I wonder if they felt ready for this transition. As Jesus calls them to himself and then sends them out to make known the kingdom of God in word and deed, were they shaking in their boots? Had they realised that they were going to be the answer to their prayers? I doubt it. Because that wasn't how rabbis worked back then. You learnt from the rabbi and after many, many years you might get to carry on his teaching but you certainly weren't expected to do the miraculous or to make known a provocative message. So here is Jesus, sending out a group of inexperienced nobodies. In fact, in their midst is a hated ex-tax collector. Another is an insurrectionist or terrorist, we might say today. And still another will prove to be a traitor. 
Jesus has deliberately selected the dregs of society and instills them with the charge to go share his message, his love and his power. It is mind-blowing, but it is the way of Jesus. He calls the most unlikely of candidates and asks them to share in his ministry. The same is true of us, friends, because every individual who calls themselves a Christian, every member of a church is called to share in the ministry of Jesus and go make known the kingdom of God through word and deed. Now, you might say that this was only for the twelve, the apostles, those closest to Jesus and who helped found the church. But if you read the book of Luke at chapter 10, you'll see that Jesus sends out the 72 other disciples to do exactly the same thing. And they come back reporting that the forces of evil submitted to Jesus' name. Apostle simply means sent one, a representative. And yes, the twelve do hold a special place and authority since they were wit eyewitnesses. But let's remember, Jesus said to them, Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. What did Jesus command them? Go and proclaim the kingdom of heaven has come near and meet the needs of the bro this broken world through his love and power. So we are all called to go share the good news of God's love in word and deed. Do we feel ready for this? Probably not. But Jesus doesn't really seem to take that as a serious excuse. Do we know what to do? I doubt it. I often don't. But if we don't try to go and share, then maybe at least two questions could arise. First, do we care enough about others? Remember, Jesus was filled with such compassion that it brought about this transition for the disciples. Jesus didn't just feel a little pity or a lukewarm concern. He cared enough that he did something. If we don't respond to the call of Jesus to share the love of God in word and deed, maybe it's because we simply don't care enough about others. Secondly, do we care enough about Jesus? Specifically, do we see him as Lord, as King, as the one to be obeyed? You see, Jesus instructed the disciples to pray, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. And then what does he do? Jesus sends out the twelve. He does it. He sends them out. So Jesus is claiming to be Lord of the harvest. He is claiming to be God of all creation. So if we don't respond to the call of Jesus to share the love of God in word and deed, maybe it's because we simply don't care enough about Jesus. What's to be done then, brothers and sisters? Do we care enough about others? Do we care enough about Jesus? Will we heed his call to share the love of God in word and deed in the Braes area? I hope we will. I hope we'll respond. And I want to give you a few ideas to get started. Firstly, prayer. From the place of prayer, sharing flowed. So we need to get praying. And in a few weeks time, we'll start a preaching series on prayer. But equally, start praying now. Maybe use the thy kingdom come prayer idea of having five people you're asking God to help find faith in Jesus. 
or just simply pray, God, help me make you known to the people I meet today and see what happens. So let's get praying. Secondly, sharing the love of God in our words is important. And not just for the confident, extroverted, qualified people, because the Church of Scotland, its membership is going off a cliff. And even in the Braes area, it is going down across all seven churches. If that is ever to change, then there must be the sharing of the love of God in our words. Because the young people I see coming along to church, who I see as active in the life of churches, are people in their teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, who are talking about faith and who want to know more about this faith. Most young people do not need more activity or another organisation to belong to. But the one thing they are not getting anywhere else is the good news of God's love for them. And to share in that, we have to use words. To make this very practical for you, we are running an alpha course online starting Wednesday the 16th of September and more details are in the notices. So let's get asking and invite someone along because last year's course was so encouraging. Many people grew in faith and many more are joining Alpha Online at this time. Finally, sharing the love of God in our actions. Jesus met the needs of people around him. So who are the people around us? Do we know our neighbours' names? Or have we had a conversation with someone who needs a helping hand? Or do we donate food to the food bank when we're down at the supermarket? There are people and needs all around us. And if we create space to become aware of them and reach out, then in meeting them, we can share the love of God in action. Friends, our core purpose is to invite, encourage and enable people to be disciples of Jesus. That begins with an invitation into relationship with Jesus, to be part of his family. And so we must vocally share this with others. But being a disciple of Jesus requires us to follow his example. And Jesus shared the love of God in action as well. May we be a people who share the love of God in word and in deed, caring enough for others and caring for the command of our Lord. May it be so. Amen. We close our time together with our final hymn, Give Me Oil in My Lamp. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Make me a fisher of men, keep me seeking. Make me a fisher of men, I pray. Make me a fisher of men, keep me seeking. Keep me seeking till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give me joy in my heart, keep me singing. 
Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Give me joy in my heart, keep me singing. Keep me singing till the break of day. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Give me love in my heart, keep me serving. Give me love in my heart, I pray. Give me love in my heart, keep me serving. Keep me serving till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Go to share the love of God in words and deed, and as you go, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you and remain with you today and forevermore. Oh, my God.